Kathleen Flanagan was born in 1960 in a town that celebrates the nuclear bomb. Local businesses and even a high school use atoms in their logos. However, in the 40s and 50s, decisions about plutonium production were based on limited information and what was known was classified. The workers didn't know what they were building until the bomb containing Hanford plutonium was dropped on Nagasaki. Once a secret, Hanford is now one of the largest nuclear cleanup projects in the world. Flanagan, a Washington State Poet Laureate, attained a master's in engineering from WSU. She worked at nuclear plants, including Hanford, before becoming disillusioned with the industry. She then went back to school, discovered poetry, and continued until earning her Master's of Fine Arts. Flanagan's first book of poetry, Famous, was published in 2005. It features poems about common experiences, reading, and historical figures. In 2012, she published Plume, a book of poetry of witness in which she tackles issues of government secrecy, nuclear waste, cancer, and other issues surrounding Hanford. I asked Flanagan if she had received a lot of negativity about Plume. She replied, I've not had much from Plume, I think because most of those who lived in the Cold War era of the plant are dead now. There's a newer understanding, although those who are trying to open up the site are still plagued by pushback. I feel I've had more impact as a poet than I ever had as an engineer at the site, and I'm proud of that. I enjoy Flanagan's aesthetic. She's very readable and down-to-earth, using more concrete images than abstract ideas. She covers subjects that I'm interested in, such as motherhood, everyday events, as well as the nuclear issue. About form, she says, I use form extensively. My book Plume uses many kinds of fo form. Our my poem, Our Fathers, uses traditional form with some leeway, a modified Chaucerian roundel. Even when I use free verse, I often invent forms that I think will suit the material and always think of form as I'm trying to understand the music in a particular poem. Our Fathers. Our fathers owned the Atomic Age. They were young and handsome in their bow ties, courting the Cold War and principles of fission, the absolute of a scientific solution. Shaved and shined, sporting bright wives and blonde children, grinding out reports and chain-smoking, our fathers owned the atom and were young and handsome in their bow ties, boarding planes for Washington. Bridge club, cocktails, school board meetings, whole body counts, contamination, secret keeping, owned them, aged but never changed them in their bow ties, even dying, trusting science to save them. It betrayed them. When asked about prose versus poetry, Flanagan said, I think form is one way in which prose differs from poetry, but primarily I think it's the music poetry makes and the distillation, the intensity of the images. Kathleen Flanagan is president of Floating Bridge Press, a poetry publisher. When asked about the impact the internet has had on publishing poetry, Flanagan replied, I think the internet makes poetry more available to curious readers. Instead of being buried in tiny staple-bound magazines that nobody but their contributors read, poems are out there for anyone to find. I don't think the readership has necessarily expanded that much, but the potential is certainly there, and it makes learning about poetry and contemporary poets so much easier now. When asked about her writing process, Flanagan said, Unfortunately, I still I seem to still need to be inspired to write a poem. I think poets who sit down every day and write come hell or high water are more likely to have a steady success and fewer dry spells. I don't do that, and I have lots of dry spells. As to how she knows when a poem is done, she answered, When it stops niggling at me and I enjoy reading it, it's like sanding wood, no more rough spots. Most poems are never finished, I just abandoned them. Her advice to new poets, read lots and lots and lots of poetry.